Good morning. My name is Israel, one of the pastors here. I want to welcome you here to Orchid Presbyterian Church, especially if you feel new to us. If you are new to us, we want to extend a special welcome to you. What a beautiful day it is. I know the wind is going to kick up later today, especially around the coastline, but here we are with some sunshine on a beautiful spring day. And my, my son, uh, actually my family, is at the uh, baseball field right now. And uh, there's a lot of baseball. I don't know why they pick Sundays. Maybe that's an anti-pastor league. Uh, I don't know what, what that's all about. But uh, I know they're not anti-pastor. But uh, it's a joy to be with you today, especially if you're joining us with our live stream. We want to welcome you as well. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. How many want more joy in your life? More joy. And that, that, amen. And that means more of the awareness of the presence of God, more thanksgiving. And that's what we're talking about today. That's what we want to live today. And we pray that that happens. Join me in prayer. Lord, we open our, ourselves to you. We ask for more joy because that's what you do. You bring joy where there is despair. You gladden our hearts. You enable us to live even through adversity, through trial. Lord, thank you that your presence is with us, that your spirit is at work, drawing us closer and closer to Christ, the unique Son of God, the Messiah. We come with our praises. Lord, we come with our requests. We come with our devotion. We look to you. Our focus is on you. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth today and every day in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. I invite you to stand for the call to worship. I'm really glad to have Jen Malone, our children and families director at OPC, uh, assist today. So our call to worship comes from Psalm 73, 21 through 28. Please join me. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. God, you are. 
brothers and sisters, before you sit down, before you sit down, will you just wave and say hello to the people around you and greet your neighbors this morning? All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. One of these days we'll be able to do it with masks and you can actually know who your neighbor is. So that will be good. All right. <laughs> so, uh, but we are so glad that you are here today and so thankful to have you in worship. We have come to worship the Lion of Judah. We have come to worship him who is worthy of our praise. And uh, we thank God for the opportunity that we have now to be able to do that together. This morning I have several things that uh, I want to do. The first is I want to do a few announcements for you. If you can pull out the insert that you have in your bulletins. And for those of you at home, I'm going to just go, these, go through all these so you can be aware of this. I'm well aware that uh, there are many of us who are not ready to come back quite yet to church. And so we are grateful for all of you who are watching from home. And if you would like to connect with some of the people who are here in fellowship, uh, Julie Colgrove is hosting a Zoom chat at 10 o'clock, the first and third Tuesday of the month. So this Tuesday, right, Julie? Okay, 10 o'clock on Tuesday. If you need the Zoom code to get into that meeting, you can email Julie at julie at jjcole.com. And uh, we encourage you to be part of that. Would also let you know that uh, this week is the National Day of Prayer. And for those of you who can participate on Thursday at uh, 10.30 to 1.30, uh, it's going to be again at the Fair Park, and it's going to be a drive-in this year uh, because of the COVID situation, but uh, it will give people a chance to gather together from around the community, and I would encourage you to participate in that on Thursday. Also, Friday, we will be back to M&M night, and uh, so our children will be gathering for uh, movies and for ministry afterwards, and that's, this really is a ministry. We have dozens and dozens of kids who come to this. It will be in Weta Fellowship Hall, and uh, if you have children or grandchildren, they are welcome to come. You do need to be masked, and so please be aware of that, and we try and practice the social distancing while we're there, but it's a great time. And how, how many did we have last time, Jen? We have 54, so it's, it's a great opportunity to reach out to children within our church and in the broader community, and there is ministry. We don't just watch movies, we talk about what does it mean. We talk about the Lord. And so uh, if you're welcome to come and participate in that. Uh, upcoming events uh, in the near future, to let you know we will hold the annual meeting for our church, the one we're supposed to have in January. we are finally get to have it this month. So May 16th, right after this worship service, probably about a half an hour uh, as in terms of time, and we invite everyone to come and be part of that. Also to let you know, we have a talent show coming up on May 23rd, so you can put that on your calendars. And also, if you uh, know people who would be interested in being part of our VBS, it will be virtual again this year, because we can't do what we did two years ago and put over 200 children in here yet. But uh, we are going to be doing a virtual VBS, and there'll be a day to pick up all the, the uh, parts for that, and then to uh, use those throughout the week and combine that with the, the webcast that will be happening every day. And so the information is here on that, and you can always talk to Jen for more information about that as well. And I also want to lead us now into a time of prayer, and I have several things that I want to set before us. Um, I guess the big prayer request on my heart this morning is for our choir director, Meredith. She's so faithful and uh, so wonderful in terms of the ministry that she brings us week after week. Um, but what many of you do not know is that Meredith uh, suffers from crippling migraines, and it has been getting worse uh, in recent years. And so she texted me a couple of hours ago and said, I just cannot get out of bed. Uh, and this is the first time uh, she's missed worship because of a migraine. But it's affected her ability to, to work and all kinds of other things. I want us to pray for her healing. She is going to doctors. She's pursuing different avenues. But those of you who have had migraines, you know what that is. And to have to contend with those on a regular basis, crippling migraines, is very, very difficult. So we want to pray for Meredith this morning and trust her into the Lord's healing hands. I also want us to be in prayer for Dick Barrett of our congregation. Dick had a procedure on his back on Friday. It wasn't the one he was supposed to have. There was some kind of snag, and so he wound up having an epidural, and it did not do much good. 
So he is still in quite a bit of pain this morning and waiting for uh, the, the procedure he was supposed to. So continue prayers for Dick and for Joan and for God's sustaining grace in their lives. I am mindful that uh, the Lord takes care of things large and small. Uh, God takes care of the big things, and he also takes care of the details. And I want to give you an illustration of that in terms of uh, just what's behind me here. We look at the uh, communion set up here, and we think, oh, that, that just kind of happens. Well, it doesn't. There are people who have to come and set that up. And when the people came to uh, start preparing communion on Thursday of this past week, they discovered that all the cups, that there were hundreds uh, last month, somehow had vanished. And uh, we had no communion cups. So we're like, how are we going to do this? And so we tried to get emergency shipments in here and there, and nothing seemed to be working. So finally, uh, we started talking to some of our sister churches around here. And very quickly, we had a wonderful response. So I want to thank our Lutheran brothers and sisters down here at the corner who, who gave us a big box of communion cups so we could have communion day. South Valley Church over on Clark also volunteered if, if they were needed. And this is a great example of how we are to cooperate together. And regardless of the name on the door, we're all on the same team and following the same Lord. So I thank God for that illustration of, yes, fellowship and support. What else shall we pray for today? What shall we bring before the Lord? Boy, it's quiet. Jeannie. Absolutely. All right. For Gary and Sherry Grant, as they leave this week on a big trip, cross, almost cross-country, a couple of thousand miles and seeing all kinds of friends and family in different places. You'll be seeing Gino in Memphis, right? And, and uh, your family up in Minnesota. So it's going to be a big car trip. And so prayers of blessing over them. And we thank God for both of you and for your ministry among us. And we pray a safe journey for you as you go. And we'll do that. What else should we pray for? Lee. Prayers. Many have asked about my mom. And she's moved here and things are going quite well. They're going well, and, but um, I would like prayers for, to ha open her heart to come to church next Sunday. I'm going to invite her here, and I'm scared, and I just hope she makes it. Her name's Judith, and I hope she's open to at least coming next week. Thanks. All right, we will pray for Judith Lee. Well, Keith? Okay, well, I'll wait till, I'll, where's the microphone going? I'll follow the mic. Down here for Rosalie? Uh, okay. Yes. No, Lorraine, yes. Um, who had a hip surgery. Yes. Yeah, prayers for Lorraine, uh, who had a, a surgery okay. this I'm past sorry. week. I'm sorry, I thought it was somebody else on the prayer chain. I saw another. Lorraine Hemingway, I thought it was. Yeah. But so, was somebody else not Lorraine? I'm sorry. I don't know Lorraine Snyder. I'm sorry. Sure you do. Uh, okay. Yeah, but... but, but <laughs> Yeah, okay. But we'll, we'll continue to pray for Lorraine as she recovers. Yes. No problem. Bob. Yes, I think all of us are aware of the really difficult time India is having with their COVID. They're having somewhere between 350,000 and 500,000 cases a day. Now, Many of you may not be aware of it, but there's a woman in our congregation that grew up here when I was pastor who is married to an Indian who have a program in India called All India Mission. Uh, they have literally started hundreds of churches in rural India. They've also built a hospital. Now, the Indian government has been increasingly antagonistic towards Christianity in, in India. And they've closed down most of the missions in India. But this one is still surviving because of the hospital. Last year, the government insisted that they take so many people into their hospital. They were supposed to be paid for that, and they were not. 
Now the latest letter I received from them, the government orders them to set aside 50 beds for COVID patients. But it's a, it's a, a sort of a win-lose situation because the people who have COVID will go to the hospital, but people who need to go there, who have severe illnesses, won't go because of the fact that they think they'll get COVID. So I think it's important that we keep them in our prayers and also our support. They, they need a lot of help out there to keep this thing going. But their goal in China this year is to establish 100 new churches. So there we go. Uh, wonderful po folks, but she grew up in the church and uh, some of you I know do remember her. All right, we will pray for those in the All India Mission as they seek to be faithful in what is a time of tremendous challenge uh, for the nation of India. You know, we are blessed and we are starting to celebrate the greater freedoms we have as more people are vaccinated, as the numbers of cases dive in our own country, but it's not that way throughout the world. And India appears to be the worst at the moment. So we will pray for what's a moment of great challenge, but also great opportunity. Yeah. Okay. What else shall we pray for? Just like a prayer for her, just to take her, the Lord to take her in his arms. And, and who, who was that? Can lung cancer? Her name is Lily. Lily? Okay. We'll pray for Lily, who's battling lung cancer. What else shall we pray for? Jen. Prayers for... For our, our foster son, we've had him uh, less than a week. And his name is? His name is Jackson. Yeah. Prayers for Jackson, a new foster son in Jen's family. And we'll have a chance to meet him next week, right? And we'll hear, and we'll look forward to having him in worship. All right. And speaking of family, there's one more thing I want to set before you here. And it kind of ties some of what we've talked about together. There's a short video that I want to show you now about the Munyar family from our church. So could we cue that up and have that now? Good morning, church family, the Manar family here. I see you, Lexi, I see you. Good morning, Selena Mar was born in 2020. <laughs> we would like to introduce to you Katana Celine Manar, who was born October 20th, 2020. And we just are so thankful for her and so blessed to have a little girl in our family. And I just, um, even though this past year has been crazy with this whole pandemic, it has also also been a blessing because we got to welcome this girl and spend time with her and actually be home with her. So I just wanted to say hi, say hi. And we love our church family, and we're so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we thank God for Katana and for the joy she has brought to the Munar family. Now, there's this also goes into a prayer request here. Uh, they were supposed to be here this morning in our 11 o'clock service, and there's a, a kind of a... a well, they got a peekaboo shower for them this morning, and that's what the, one of the tables is out there for, for presents. And then this last week, uh, we found out that Julio, the father in the family, uh, was exposed to COVID through a coworker and tested positive. So the whole family's on quarantine for two weeks because of that. So uh, they are not here this morning, and, uh, but he's recovering and just prayers for them as they have to just wait and be patient, as everyone else has who's been through this. And uh, let's just ask for God to be with them as well. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you, and we are aware that we live in a time of great blessing and great challenge. We thank you for your goodness to this congregation. We thank you for how we have had so few cases, really, uh, in terms of our numbers. And we are grateful that we have been spared uh, great numbers of, of cases of COVID. And yet, Lord, now... We have a wonderful family with a new baby and, and ready to celebrate and yet unable to. We just pray for Julio and we pray that you will be removing this disease from him. We pray it will not spread to anyone else in his family. We pray for baby Katana that she will grow up in your blessing, Lord, that she will know you, 
from early on and walk with you all your life and experience your truth and your goodness in her life. And we pray that you will just continue to be the God who provides for every need, Lord, in this family. We thank you, Lord, for the gift that the Malone family is celebrating in a new foster child. And we pray that as uh, Jackson comes now with them, we pray that you will bless him, that he will find their love and stability and all that you want to build into his life. And we pray that that is a, continues to be a good and a smooth transition in every way. And we thank you, God, for how you are at work in many places and many ways. We pray blessing over people who are recovering today, asking for Lorraine Snyder, for her healing as she heals from her surgery. Praying also, Lord, for Dick Barrett, that you will sustain him as he continues to seek relief for his back and that you will watch over him and be about his healing. And asking this morning, Lord, for Meredith, who we would uh, expect to be here and conducting the choir, and yet, Lord, she is unable to do that. Lord, come to her aid this day. We pray for the lifting of the pressure within her brain. We pray that this migraine will dissipate. We ask that she will be able to get out later today and do some things. And we just ask that in this time when she feels so helpless, so immobilized, that you will come to her aid and that you will be a healer, not just today, Lord, but in the days to come. And if you're going to do that through the consult she's having with doctors, that's great, Lord. Or if you will do that by the direct touch of your hand, we just do pray for her healing. And we thank you for our sister and for her gifts which she brings to us in so many ways. Thank you, God, for the blessings in our lives. Thank you, God, for the sign of fellowship of the churches of our valley and that allowed us to have communion today. Thank you, Lord. Will you bless our Lutheran brothers and sisters here and those at South Valley who were so willing and ready to come to our aid so quickly? And continue, Lord, to give us an appreciation for each other in the great diversity that is the body of Christ. And we thank you for Gary and Sherry and for their ministries here. And we ask that you will bless them now as they hit the road for several weeks, Lord. Be with them as they drive a few thousand miles. And we pray for safety every part of that journey. We pray that they will have wonderful times of discovery, wonderful reunions with family and friends. And we just pray that they will know your presence with them every moment of this journey and then restoring them in safety to us at the end of it. And Lord... We pray that you will be at work in places that need the touch of your grace, Lord. We pray for Lee's mom, Judith, and you brought her here, Lord. You know all the, the difficulties involved in that and how it almost didn't happen, but she's here now, Lord. And we pray, along with Lee, that she'll be here in this sanctuary next Sunday on Mother's Day. You'll open her heart to be willing to come. And we pray that you will help her to receive your love and your grace through your people here, Lord. And we pray that you will just be doing a, a work within her. Thank you, Lord, for her son who loves her and wants her to be in fellowship. And we pray that you will open the door for that to happen. We ask that you'd be with Lily, who's struggling with lung cancer. Almighty God, when we are having these terrible battles that seem our very lives hang in the balance, we are aware of it. It's up to you. And so we pray that Lily will turn to you and there find strength and peace. And we pray that your good will will go forward in her life and that you will know, uh, she will know your peace throughout. And Lord, we want to pray for uh, the whole situation in India and in the world. Uh, Lord, we're, we are not out of this yet. And India is right in the middle of this. We pray, Lord, it's hard for us to grasp the second most populous country on earth, but at the same time, Lord, three or 400,000 cases a day, Lord, we pray that you will bring relief to this land, and we pray that you will strengthen the hands of all who are working towards health and towards healing in that place, and we thank you for those in the All India Mission, one of whom came out of this congregation, Lord, and she's there right now, Lord, Will you bless her and her husband? Will you grant them health, we pray, and safety? And as they find themselves told that this is what you have to do, and at the same time battling the fears of the locals, if you take COVID patients, should we even come in? We pray that you'll help them navigate this time. We pray that your spirit will be upon them in such a way 
that they will have wisdom and love and all they need to serve you well in this point in time. And we pray for your blessing upon their ministry. We pray as they continue to witness to you and seek to found churches that you will make that ministry fruitful for your kingdom. And we thank you that you are the God who is able to do that and that you are at work in and through us, Lord, even now. And so we trust all into your hands in Christ's name. Amen. And amen. And now let's worship God together as we have the times of our tithes and offerings and the, uh, what do you call it, the basket, the canister for, for the offerings at the back. And if you didn't have a chance to give on the way out, on the way in, you can do that on the way out. For those of you who are at home, there's several different ways to give. You can mail your contribution to the church at the address there on your screen or give online or text to give. But however you choose to give, may the Lord bless you in your giving, and may the Lord create in us those cheerful hearts, those cheerful givers that bring him glory. And may we rise to this opportunity to participate with God in his work here and around the world. May our giving be an act of worship. Many of you know this song very well. But listen to it with new ears because he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he Generous God, as we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. 
May our gifts be acceptable in your sight. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength be unto you, our God, forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, happy Sunday. Thank you for joining us again this morning. Now, the Bible talks about a man that God loved very much, and this man loved to pray. He prayed to God his entire life, and he loved God with his whole heart, and many of his prayers were songs that he actually wrote down. Can you guess who it is? Take a look. Stories of the Bible. David's prayers. This is David. Hello. David was the second king of Israel. Yeah. He was a great warrior. Oh. He loved God with all of his heart, and he prayed to God often. Hmm. David loved God so much that he wanted to give him a special house to live in. Yeah, that's it. But God told David that it wasn't his plan for David to build this house. Even so, David thanked God for all he had done for him. He praised God for the great God that he is. Hmm. David wrote many psalms, which are prayers and songs to God that are in the Bible. In many of his psalms, David began by thanking and praising God. He thanked God for answering his prayers and giving him victory over his enemies. He thanked God for guiding him and showing him the right path to take. David thanked God for always being with him. Even when David was an old man, he thanked God in front of all the people of Israel for all that he had done. He said to the people, Give praise to the Lord your God. David talked to God his whole life, and this is one reason why God said, I have found a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to. If you guess David, you are right. But not just any David, King David. Now, King David had a heart that just loved God, and he knew who his father was. He loved to pray, and he wrote many of his prayers down that are in the Bible. Now, this is the same David that we've learned about in Sunday school that did amazing things as a boy. And he was not a perfect man, but he just loved God and he prayed about everything. Now, another thing in this video that we can learn is how important it is to be thankful. Have you ever gone to your parents and just complained? I know that I have, and I know that there are children in my home who do the same. But God reminds us how important it is to be thankful, that even in our requests, even in our pain, even in our sorrow and our joy and all these other things, we still need to be thankful. There are always things to be thankful for. And when we pray to God, we should start our prayers with thanks. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for loving us. Those simple phrases of thanks. So kids, remember how important it is to pray every day in every way. And like David, King David, be thankful that we have such an amazing God and Father. And this coming Friday, we do have an M&M movie night. We'd love to see you in Weta Hall. And we do have the talent show coming up this month as well. And you may be thinking, eh, I don't really have any talents to show or anything to do. I can help you discover what your talent is. So if you're interested, have your mom or dad or whoever you live with give me a call.
God bless you, and I really, really hope to see you soon. Well, that was wonderful. I want to get right into the text. We are wrapping up our series in the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, and we come to a very familiar portion of Scripture. And yet, it is still fresh, it is still needed, and it needs to be lived out. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, open our hearts to you again. Draw us close to you. Oftentimes, Lord, we drift away. Our hearts become hard. So we pray that you will renew us in our thinking and even how we feel and how we live our lives, Lord. We're grateful that you are here, that you're the one who called us here, and you're the one speaking you're the one in charge. We look to you. We love you. We're grateful, Lord, for your first love. You first loved us. Holy Spirit, we pray you'd fill us up that we may know Jesus and that we may have everything he has in the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. And here it goes, verse 4 through 7 of chapter 4 of Philippians. And it goes like this. This is the word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. And do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you believe that's the word of the Lord, say thanks be to God. Amen. You know, if the Apostle Paul had written this letter from Spain on a Spanish beach, sipping on an iced tea in the sunshine, these words would still be true. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If he had been in the apex of his ministry, and seeing multiple leaders give birth to new leaders, multiple churches actually living out their faith in unity of the Spirit, even in, despite suffering, that they would actually be multiplying as a church and not quarreling among themselves. Had he not been in chains, it would still ring true, but there's something different about this text when you imagine the apostle writing this letter in perhaps a dark, dank space, in chains, rejoice in the Lord always. There's something very powerful about it because he was in the midst of suffering, not knowing if he would be freed or if this would be the last place he would live. And they, who had sent a love offering to him, had questions, how would he be? This, this man that had poured his life into them, what would be his future? Was he gonna be okay? He has a word for Christians then, and the word still rings true today, rejoice in the Lord. He is not saying, just be happy no matter what happens. That, there was a song like that, right? Uh, he could have said, just be happy, just ignore 
my situation, make light of it. Uh, just ignore the problems in your life. You know, we're going to go to heaven. So just ring up your credit cards, ring up your debts. It doesn't matter. Just live life. He is not saying that. In fact, that's probably why people are so much in debt. It is a form of denial to keep swiping that card, isn't it? He is not saying to live in denial. He is not saying to live in a reckless fashion. He is saying to find the joy that has already been given to you in the Lord. He is not saying to be joyful in whatever way that you can. Whatever makes you happy, go for it. He is not saying that. That's what the world does. What he's saying here is to find all your joy in the Lord. And what I learned, because I always knew that joy is a gift from God, but what I learned is that it is the stewardship of joy that he is commanding here. In other words, if a wealthy landowner gave you land to farm or to garden or to use for whatever purpose it had been used or granted, what he's saying is, I'm giving you this land to take care of and I want there to be fruit and I want you to enjoy that work. I'm giving it to you to, to actually cultivate what it is designed for. How many know that you were made to rejoice in God? You were designed to know him. You were designed to hear him and rejoice in life. And quite frankly, each and every one of us, you might imagine your own life, your own heart, your own mind as like a garden that has been gifted. What are you doing and what are we doing with that garden that can produce joy? So joy is a gift that must be cared for, nurtured, cultivated. That's why it's a command. Tend to the garden of joy in your life. But many of us neglect that garden. We'd rather go shopping at the grocery store for other bits of happiness. But there's something amazing when your focus is on the Lord. But he doesn't say rejoice with the Lord. He doesn't say rejoice about the Lord. He doesn't say Anything like that. He says, in the Lord. It is like swimming. The whole reason you can swim is because you're in water. The whole reason you can have joy is because you are in Christ. Your life was meant to be lived in Christ because every single thing was made for him. And when you align yourself to his words, to his way of life, for his praise, for his glory, when you see your most difficult situations, when you see your highest happiness, when you see all the valleys, all the mountaintops, through him, in him, something changes in your life. Now you're not looking for other people to conform to your set of rules for you to be happy. Now you become free. So free that you are filled up from the inside out in order to be you. A free you. You've been a chained you before, haven't you? Chained to maybe the career has to make me feel like I'm worth something. Maybe... I need approval from my parents. 
and maybe they're long gone, but I still need that approval, or I'm still looking for the approval from my family, or maybe I need the approval of this person, or maybe I just need to prove to myself, and all of that is a chasing after the wind, Ecclesiastes says. When you have your sights in the Lord, on the Lord, he can fill you up at any time. Any time. And you can live life free. Are you free today in the cultivation of joy in your life? Or are you still looking for everyone else to give you what only the Lord can? Hmm. That's why he's free in chains. That's why he is able to write to the church, rejoice in the Lord. Always. Come on, Paul. Always. Even when we're behind budget, mid-year. Yes. How about when we have turnover or we have losses or we have questions or we have doubts or we have concerns welcome to life yes even then especially then not denial but full engaged ministry knowing that you are in the lord have you ever lived like that for a year joyless christianity is a plague. It is not what Christianity should be. A joyless Christianity is a Christless Christianity. Something else has taken the center. And if that challenges you today, it was designed to challenge you. Because it challenges me every single day to find out who fills my cup it better not be a coffee company. It better not be someone else. It must be the Lord. I'll confess to you something. I read the Bible as a teacher and as a student, but not as someone who wanted to eat. Not as someone who, wanted to, who was hungry. I operated more as a chef than a hungry child. Do you know what I'm saying? You can approach the scriptures so that you can teach well and preach well and understand well and still not eat. Have you ever seen a hungry chef? They're cranky. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. I apologize. We can talk about it after. Here's what I'm saying. It's possible to preach sermons for years and not center yourself on Christ every single day. And, and we've talked about this before, approaching the scriptures like a hungry child approaches a bakery in the morning. You were designed to feed off what the Lord says and in that find your joy. And that is why, one, two, three, rejoice in the Lord, and then it follows very naturally, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Can I tell you something? That there is, an, a, that there is a correlation of joy and gentleness. Those that don't have joy in the Lord, but have fleeting Bouts of happiness are very susceptible to not be gentle all the time. What does gentleness mean? It means you're filled up with the Lord's satisfaction so that when someone does not meet your expectations, you have patience. Because you know how the Lord has had patience with you. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I got real quiet in here. Maybe it's always quiet in here. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. What, what is he saying here? Be like Jesus. 
Look at Jesus when he goes to the cross. Is he gentle? Oh, yes. We sang about it. He is the lamb. He was a lion, but he chose to be a lamb when he went to the cross. Can you imagine when they mocked him, what he could have done to them? When they, when they blindfolded him and they beat him and they said, prophesy, who struck you? He could have said exactly who they were and exactly what their life would look like. Could have struck them with blindness himself. He could have multiplied in retaliation, but he did not. He did not because of love and joy. The Christian life is a joyful life that is full of gentleness for others. Does that mean you just let them run over you? Does that mean, oh yes, so you're, what you're telling me is, is that I'm continually living my life going to Golgotha. Well, Jesus said, if you follow me, you must carry your own cross. So in other words, no, you're not a doormat, but you don't retaliate either. You don't say, yeah, that's right, I am horrible. All those horrible things you said about me, I'm horrible. Actually, no. Remember, it's a joyful life where you, you, you receive your marching orders, your identity, your satisfaction, your confirmations, your commands from Jesus, and that's why you can be gentle with other people who simply don't know you or know Christ or don't even know themselves. Why? Because the Lord is near. You know what, my son, I, I, I help, as, you, as I just mentioned, I am one of the assistant coaches on, the, on his baseball team. And I told the coaches, I said, I'm not the baseball guru. I'm the motivation guy. I'm the communication guy. And they said, okay, yeah, we already knew that. And my son said, you know, when you're not around, so-and-so acts crazy. I said, yeah, that's, that's how we are growing up. Well, we, know how to, we know how to behave when someone's near. When the teacher is in the classroom, and when the teacher leaves, that, remember? Remember that, when the teacher left the classroom? A joyful Christianity knows that Jesus is always near. And they want him near. And what he means by, by near here is that he's coming soon. You can be gentle with someone and not retaliate because you know the King Jesus is doing something marvelous in the world, in your life, and he's coming again. The next one is do not worry. Literally it says about nothing be anxious. About nothing be anxious. Oh, come on, Paul. Isn't that part of being a human being is just dealing with anxiety? He is not saying here not to care. He is saying don't drown in that care. Don't let it overfill you. Don't drown in despair. You should never be drowning in despair. And you're like, well, how do you do that? You go back to point number one. <laughs> Joy in the Lord. The rejoice, the cultivation. And then you are able to have increased patience with other people in your life. And then about your own self, isn't that what a good definition of joy is? Jesus, others, and yourself. That's what Paul says right here. Rejoice in Jesus, be gentle with others, and about yourself, don't ever drown in despair, in anxiety. Don't ever do that. If that's happening, you go back to number one. And you go back to number one with prayer. 
You bring all your requests, not just some of them, all of them to him with thanksgiving. With this attitude knowing that he is sustaining you even though you feel like you're drowning and slipping, even though you may be in a pit. And the more that you try to get out, the more dirt covers you and deeper the hole is. But there is deliverance for those who put their faith and trust in him. The prayer life of a Christian is grounded in joy and it is gentle toward others. The prayer, it all goes together. You cannot take one part out. It won't work. You can't say, I'm so joyful for the Lord and then have no patience for people in your life. Or you can't have all the patience for everyone and let them do whatever they want to you and let, let them run over you and then um, not pray about it. You see how there are, they go together. They go together to correct the other and to bring balance in your life. And this is, one, this is wonderful. And I wish I had 30 more minutes, but I do not. I really don't. Because it's time already. We've got to celebrate the gifts that the Lord has given us today. In this text, joy is a command. And I've already explained that, I hope. Joy is a gift that must be cultivated, so that's why there's a command. But peace here, peace is a promise. That if you live life like this, the peace of God, the wholeness, the healing, will protect you it will actually stand garrison over your heart and mind. And notice that he's speaking to the church. Each and every one of us must cultivate this in our own way, in our own life. And then together, if you have a garden of joy, what does that do to the church? Well, then you have a lot of good gardening going on, don't you? We don't want to be the church that lacks joy. So that means we take personal responsibility for this command and yet we live this out together. And when we live this out together, the peace of God protects us. In Christ Jesus. I love this. Oh, there's so much more I, I want to say. But I always want to say more. So that's nothing new. Joy here is a command, but peace is a promise. Whereas others live in retaliation, where there's no real forgiveness, where there's no real friendship, everything is quid pro quo, this for that, or I deserve this, or just give me what I pay for. When you live life like that, it only goes so far. But the Christian says no to all these things. Why? Because our life is in Christ. So we can offer gentle responses when someone is really rude. We can forgive people when they don't even know what they did to us. We can bestow the chance for friendship whenever possible, whenever it makes sense. Basically, we live life without the strings attached, trying to manipulate people. We enjoy life to the fullest because that is what life in Jesus is, full of freedom and joy. Pray with me. Lord, we don't know how to live like this apart from you. Only in you will we learn, will we grow, will we experience this. We pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for the hymn, My Jesus, I Love Thee. Let's sing that together. This morning we will be, you will be served communion from this table, the Lord's table, not my table or Pastor Bruce or Bob Weida's table, not even Orchid Press table, the table of the Lord. Aren't you glad that he welcomes you again and again back to eat with him? It's the table of the Lord. It's for anyone who says, I put my faith and my hope and my love in him. He's my savior. He's my Lord. If that's you, even if you are a member of a different church, you're welcome at this table because Jesus welcomes you. But if that's not your faith, if you still are struggling and you have questions, then we're so glad you're here. We pray that you will receive a blessing from the Lord today, but that you would not partake of that. Because in partaking this, what you're saying is, he is my everything. I live for him. He gives me everything I need, and I'm going to give everything I have. That's the Christian life. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, on that Passover meal, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he said, take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body given for you. And after the supper had ended, the Passover meal, he took most likely what would be the fourth cup of the meal, and he took that cup and he says, this cup is actually the cup of the new covenant. It's the new way. It's sealed in my blood. Do take, drink this. This is my blood. Pour it out. Shed, my blood shed for the 
forgiveness of sin. And the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth said, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim, we proclaim that he died for us until he comes again. The lamb and the lion, the lion and the lamb. The Apostle Paul also said very clearly that no one should take this carelessly, that we shouldn't just say, oh, it's just another Sunday, or this is just another time. No, this is time with the Lord. We believe that Jesus, we're not just simply looking back at what Jesus has done for us. That's actually a huge part. And we're not just looking forward to when we will see him in glory, but this is actually time with the Lord, in the Lord. He's he's with us. He's the host and he's the meal. He wants to restore you and nourish you and encourage you today. So let's have a moment of prayer, a a silent moment as as is our custom, which is very biblical to give us space to either upload or download whatever we need from the Lord. Let's do that now. Lord Jesus, we're grateful that you welcome us again and again. And we do not come because we're worthy, but because you alone are worthy. We do not come because we have arrived at some level of spirituality. Oh no, but you, being the Almighty, took on flesh and you dwelt among us. And you raised us up to the heavenly place to be with you as we put our hope in you, our faith, our love. We're grateful Lord, that the kingdom of God is peace and joy, righteousness, peace and joy. We pray that you would help us cultivate that in our lives by the power of your spirit and in this church. And we pray a blessing over all the churches, especially as we celebrate with what our brothers and sisters gifted us. We're mindful of them. We bless them. We're grateful that you do that, Lord, for us. We look to you, Jesus. Amen. This morning, we will be serving you as we have been doing during COVID. As you, as you leave in the narthex, we will be serving you at the door. So please allow us a moment so we could go back there and get set up so that we can serve you. And if you, if you need prayer, uh, we hope that you will call the office or you can write something to us or you can talk to us after the service and we'll be happy to pray with you. So this, this morning, rejoice in the Lord, always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen.